I'm excited to introduce our new bishop of the Diocese of Gary, Bishop Robert McClory. And we have a few minutes with him today to talk about the season that's coming up, the season of Lent. Can you explain where the ashes used on Ash Wednesday uh, comes from and what they signify? Well, there's a great tradition, go back to the Old Testament, we talk about people in sackcloth and ashes, that it's really a sign of penitence. It's a time, time of saying, you know, I'm all yours, God, and I'm living my light humbly in submission to your will. Uh, now, there's a practical question. Hey, where do these ashes come from? Where do we get them? Now, I will tell you there are, um, there are uh, religious uh, goods manufacturers who make sure that we have proper and appropriate ashes. Uh, traditionally, they come from palms. I mean, the palms that are used in Palm Sunday uh, would be burnt, and then those would become ashes. Now, there are some parishes that have chosen not to order from, shall we say, the uh, provider of such ashes, uh, but they do this themselves. Um, I've been at parishes, for example, where uh, the scout troop was given the opportunity to be the ones as a project who would both collect the palms, because a lot of people have them stored up for the last year, and they dry out, you know, they can burn pretty easily. So that was a project that uh, one of the scout troops took upon themselves. They would collect the ashes, and then they would burn them, and then the, they would have them ready to go. I know that we do have at least one parish in Gary uh, where they are burning the palms, and they will use those palms on Ash Wednesday. So uh, that's just kind of the practicality and the mechanics of it. But uh, what happens when the ashes are imposed? So there are two formulas that the priest can use. One is remember you are dust and into dust you shall return. The other is repent and believe the gospel. And those two uh, both express a certain truth. So one is that sense that our time is passing. So make sure that you're using that time now uh, for all that God intended you to have. And so that sense of finality, that you know, remember you came from nothing, you're gonna go back to nothing, can sound a little sobering. I mean, it, it's, it's a stark word to hear, but it's a reminder that now's the time uh, to get your priorities right. Now is the time to love God. Now is the time to say yes to Jesus. Now is the time to get your relationships in right order. Now is the time to love other people. Now is the time to be the person that God calls you to be. And so rather than just saying, oh my gosh, I'm going to die, um, it's really a motivation to say, am I living the way God wants me to live? Because this time is finite and I want to make the most out of it. Uh, the other really mirrors what uh, you know, Jesus said at the very beginning, repent and believe in the gospel. So it's a call to repentance. So primarily, Lent should be a time where we, uh, with repentant hearts, uh, turn to Jesus and believe in the good news. And so uh, it's not simply just a, a liturgical uh, practice devoid of meaning that you have ashes, but it evokes a, a reminder of our mortality uh, but the important thing during that time is to repent, uh, to believe the good news of Jesus, and to share that love with others.